Uh, my name is Cassandra Vinegret. I am a freelance journalist and I went to South Sudan with a grant from the Pulitzer Center to cover the civil war that's taking place there. I have been covering what's been happening in South Sudan for a long time and watching from afar, but it is the world's newest nation. It's been on the brink of collapse for some time and with the collapse of a peace agreement in July, uh, the situation started to escalate again. So I wanted to go there and see what was really happening and how it was affecting the lives of South Sudanese civilians. South Sudan's civil war, this conflict, has been characterized by an endless stream of atrocities. Uh, killings, mass rapes, the use of starvation as a weapon of war, entire villages being burned to the ground. I went to um, a place called Bentu in the northern part of the country which was the theater for some of the war's worst atrocities. And there were thousands of people on the move. Some of it was because villages were being attacked by different uh, armed groups, fighters. Others were just scared that things were going to explode. There were reports of weapons stockpiling, there were reports of fighters on the move, uh, an increase in recruitment. So when I got there, there was a lot of, there's a lot of fear and there's a lot of tension. This is a country that already has been decimated by the conflict. So with people saying it was only gonna get even worse, it's hard to imagine how much worse it could get. When I got there, the UN was saying that the, the stage was being set for a repeat of what happened in Rwanda, a genocide. It's, it's really, really striking when you hear the UN warning of a genocide and saying ethnic cleansing is being carried out. And then hearing that reflected in the stories of women and men and children too. And so they were able to communicate what was happening to them. And they had ideas about why. And this, was a, this is a conflict that has had ethnic dimensions to it from the get-go. And so hearing their stories, uh, mothers saying that they hid in swamps for days, holding their, their children above the water so they could dodge bullets and escape the fighting. Um, other families saying that because they were on the move and they were fleeing fighting, there was no food. Everyone was hungry. Sometimes in my reporting, you know, especially in, in conflicts, when I speak to you, I say, what are your hopes? What do, you, what do you hope for in the future? And the answers I got in South Sudan were devastating. Um, you know, some places people say, I, I want my kids to have an education. Um, I spoke to one mother who saw me writing in my notebook, and she said, maybe one day my daughter can have one of those. And she was talking about my pen. That was, that was it. That's what she wanted for her daughter, maybe for her one day to have a pen. And I think from outside, I heard a lot of people, mainly aid workers and people who've worked in the country quite a bit, every once in a while would, people would say, you know, there, there's still, despite all this devastation, there's still hope. I, I heard and saw very little hope, and I think that was really, really striking. What was really, really important to me was making this about the people in South Sudan, people who are living this daily, um, what, their, what their daily experience is like, what their daily existence is like, how are they surviving this, and what are their thoughts about what's happening. I really, really wanted to make sure that the people I met in South Sudan had a voice, and that their voices were the ones that were coming through. And this is hopefully a way by speaking to humans and putting a human face on this story. Maybe someone can see themselves in the, the teenage girl who walked for six days. Can you imagine if you're a 16 year old, what, what it would be like if you're a 16 year old in Washington DC, can you imagine what it would be like if you had three minutes to decide what to grab and then run? South Sudan is, is very far away, but there are, there are people there whose lives are being changed and affected and I just really, really hope that even if one person takes an interest, if one person looks a little further and tries to learn more and understand more about what's happening there, then, then I'd be really, really grateful.